Um, so before we start, if you just want to like say your name, you know, say how long you've been out or what you run for, all that stuff. Just a okay. Uh, I'm Gemma Champong, uh, 27 years old now. Um, I've been running track for this is about my ninth or tenth year, and I've been post collegiate for five years now. For about that long, yeah, and I run for the country of Ghana. So a lot of people, especially a lot of Americans, they think like, though they would label me as a professional because I'm technically like doing this kind of career-wise, um, and they like to think of like football and baseball where they have leagues, but track doesn't have leagues like that. So I like to call myself semi-professional to differentiate from like professionals that are getting paid for this. So I had to do other jobs to pay for this. So I would say semi-professional to like kind of differentiate that I'm not making any money really. Like I'm doing this for other benefits and hopefully to someday make it to that money level, but I'm not making money straight out. Well, I started late compared to a lot of other track people because they all start like in middle school, like early high school and they kind of take it kind of seriously, I feel like. But I started junior year, and mostly because my friends were doing it, and we we're all like, oh, let's just do this extracurricular activity to add to our resume. So I started cross country and like just followed along with whatever the season was that they had. Like, I didn't really care that much. And it wasn't until indoor where I like ran like a 200 where my coach was like, oh, maybe you are fast. <laughs> so then like, I mostly was a 400 runner in high school. And so I ran the four, the two, like the relays and stuff. Um, and then my senior year, all the girls quit. So it was just me and then the guys. And that's when I started doing more individual events and I made it to like states um, for the one and the two, just just trying, doing nothing really. Um, and then my coaches in high school, well basically like everyone in high school was just like, why not just try in college? So when I went to BU, um, I just went to the coaches here and were just like, oh, these are my times. Like, is it good enough to walk on? And they said, fine. Um, and then it went from there. Well, I came in like slow, like college standard, I was pretty slow. I mean, good enough to like score in our conference, like a point here or there. I think I came in like 12, I don't know, three or something in 100 and I don't know, 26 or something in the two. I don't remember. You can just look it up. They're all online somewhere. <laughs> but um, I remember I came in, like I didn't know how to use blocks. So like basically I like sucked. I couldn't finish workouts. Um, I was just out of like shape, like real track shape. And so like my freshman year was really tough. I was like sick all the time. Like just even like just regular college things, like I can win in college and like being on the new team with like real like regimented schedules. And like I never lifted really before. So like <laughs> it was hard to like kind of get on top of that. So like I remember I ended my season early. I could have gone to like ECAC or something, but I ended the season early and I went home and I just took a long break and then like I almost seemed magically, but like I came back sophomore year um, and I was just like a way better suddenly. And not way better, but like I could finish workouts. I like paid a bit more attention. I treated a lot more seriously. And I remember that year, like the big like jump was like a Texas Relays, which was almost, I think it was the first or second meet of the outdoor season that year. And I like basically dropped like 0.5 off my 100 PR and I went from like 12.3 to like 11.8. And that was when I was really like, wow, things are happening. Um, and then I went from there, like, at the time we had um, this girl on the team who was, she had like the records that before me, and she was like the fastest she'd been recruited and everything. And it was around then that I started like catching up to her. And I felt like, oh wow, this is cool. And I started taking it more, like as I got better, I started taking it more seriously. So, like I started paying attention to my nutrition, I started paying attention to sleeping, I stopped going out as much, I stopped like drinking. Um, yeah, I just treated it more seriously because I just saw that it was all working and I felt better. And then by the end of it, like, I ended, like, with, like, all these records, basically. And, like, and looking back on it now, they're not even great records, but they, like, mean a lot to me. Um, how I started running internationally. So, I run for the country of Ghana and 
the representative saw like me at a meet or something, like they saw my name and the results, and I have a very Ghanaian last name, like a champong, it's very common. So they're like, oh, she's Ghanaian, like maybe she'll want to run for the team because my times were good enough to at least be on the relay. So I remember they approached me my junior year, or no, my sophomore year, but I had to stay and do summer classes, so I couldn't go to World Champs that year. It was in Russia, I think. So, and I was kind of iffy about it because I never, I never heard of Ghanaian runners. I never like, I never saw them at events or anything, or I never even crossed my mind that that was an option. And my coach, Coach Sanders, was very like, he pushed very strongly for it. He was like, this is fine. Like, he knew I had a teammate who I like live with and like train with now, but like, my teammate. My Ghanaian teammate at the time was like, she trained in Syracuse, and she basically came to me and was like, hey, this is a real thing. I'm a real person. This is a real team. Basically, like, they saying, like, you could really, like, this is a real opportunity here. So my junior year, the summer of my junior year, I, like, went with them to Commonwealth Games, African Championships, and then we also had, like, a long training camp. So I was basically, like, abroad for, like, all summer. And that was like a real like experience where I really felt like, okay, this is what it's like to be like a professional athlete, like going to a training camp, training with these random people, meeting all these people on the team. Like it was actually a bigger team than I thought. And then going to these championships. So we went to Commonwealth Games first. And Commonwealth Games is like, for those in America that don't know about it, it's like a mini Olympics for the Commonwealth territories. So basically the ter like the places that Britain British came and conquered they have a Commonwealth Games later for some reason. And it's actually pretty fun. Like you see all these, you really get to understand like that the British really colonized a lot of people. <laughs> but also like you see, like you get to experience all the sports more. You get to see all these countries. I made like so many friends. And like even like there are many like opening ceremonies and closing ceremonies. I really like, that was when I was really just like, I want to like run at least to the Olympics. Like I want to keep doing this. It was really an experience. And then African Champs, I even made finals that year, and like we won like silver or something in the relay. And I was like, oh, this is a real possibility. Like these are real accolades that you can get. And after that, like I came back and I was just like, yeah, I'll just keep doing it until basically I told myself I'll do it until I stop getting better. So the first two years, I lived in Boston still. Like I stayed at BU. Um, and I stayed with my college coach. Like most people stay with their college coaches because it's the easiest thing to do. Um, like it's usually the most cost efficient. Like you don't have to like figure out like what like group can I try and join or like who do I need to pay. Like most college coaches will like just like keep let you keep going with the group. Like this is what you're already doing. Um, so I did that. But then my college coach ended up going to a different school. So I had the option then of like finding a new group or staying and seeing who came and trying that out. So I did that because I didn't want to move from Boston. Um, and that was okay. It didn't work great, but I also didn't want to make, like, that was already a huge change. I already didn't want to make, like, another giant change. It was the year, I think it was that Olympic year, so I didn't want to, like, make that huge jump before the Olympic year, like, moving everything and figuring that all out. It's just too much of a change, so I tried that. I did PR, I did well that year, but I decided the next year, I think, to move. So I had a teammate, the teammate I was talking about before, like she lives in Syracuse and she trained with her. She stayed there for like years and she's uh, ranked number one in Ghana. She has like a bunch of the records and stuff. And I've been running on a relay with her for years by that point. So she had just bought a house and said, we have an extra room. My coach is willing to train you. Like, and it also makes sense for the team. Like we run the relay together. We can practice handouts if we need to. So I decided to move over there and I made rent way cheaper because one of the biggest things after college is finances. Like, aside from the coaching, you have to have money to live places. If you really want to like, if you're hurt or like have things to deal with, you need like a massage person, a chiropractor, a personal trainer. Um, I didn't have any of those. I did see a massage person for a, few year, for a few times here in Boston because I knew him from when I was in college, so it was like a bit cheaper. But it's definitely not a thing that I do as often as I should. And then when I moved to Syracuse, they had a chiropractor who was like, basically like sponsoring them. Like he helps them out and like, he was like, yeah, sure, you can come on over. So I see that now. I see him like once a week. So those are just more benefits to moving, um, mainly financial, but that's also the biggest thing that you have to deal with, like finances. Like if you're not a professional where you're sponsored by someone, it's definitely the finances thing. Oh, it definitely makes it easier having someone. So 
before moving, like I thought I was like I was serious about track, but after moving and they also had, like she's married and has a husband who also runs um, summer professionally. So, and they've been, they're older than me and I've been doing it a lot longer. So to me, like going to live with them was kind of like living with like these two mentors who have like had all this experience, like really knew what was happening. And like I had been talking to her a couple years before that, like, like asking her questions, figuring out how to do it. But living with them, I really saw like, oh, I should be doing like these things differently. Like I started eating, like I thought I was eating better, but I started eating way better. And I wasn't even drinking protein before that, so I started drinking protein like when I moved with them because I did it like all the time. I started taking more supplements. Um, basically, I started taking more, paying more attention to those small details because when you go from college to semi-professional or even professional, like it's really the small things that matter because everyone's doing the same thing basically. Like no one's having these like super special workouts or super special like techniques happening. It's all really like the t t t attention to detail that matters the most at this point. And like having them like basically be like accountable, like accountability buddies, I like to call them. Like someone there to say like, in a joking way, but like also like she should really be doing that. Like she really be eating that, and it kind of like makes you like really think about it. Like should I be eating that? Should I be doing this? And it's also nice like so I was training alone in Boston, and it's nice having someone to train with, and also at my level. So like even doing starts with her like going through practices, like you just, you always just do better when someone's there watching you or someone's there like doing it with you. It makes you less lazy. <laughs> Getting into meets is hard. It can be hard sometimes, depending on the meet. So some meets, so if you live in the U.S., it's hard because you have to do the college schedule and then when college ends, you basically have this period of time where you have like, very, very few meets, and you had to kind of really find them, like, you had to really search through them. Um, I ended up signing up with this, like, freelance agency, kind of, um, where it's not a real agency, where they sign you and, like, you, they, like, take a portion of your money or whatever. Well, they do do that, but, like, on a smaller scale. So, like, anyone can sign up with them. They're not, like, selected for anything. Like, just pay them, like, whatever small fee they have, and then they'll find you these meets, and then you can, like, pick and choose and figure out the schedule. So my first year where I was really like semi-professional, I signed up with them and then I did like the college schedule. So I went to like the college meets here and there. And those are pretty easy to find. Like there's a meet everywhere during the college season. And so up until May, like I did that. Then I did maybe one or two meets in Florida. A lot of meets are by that time around Florida, Texas or California. So I went to Florida. And then I went, basically like packed a huge suitcase and then went and stayed in London for however long. And I used London as my base because I had family there and I stayed with a friend because he had room in his house. And I basically like put like one big suitcase there, like packed a small suitcase and then went to meets from there. So using the agency, like I signed up for a few meets and you like, you can kind of schedule it like, okay, I'm going to go here and here and here. And then I'll travel to those meets, like do the three day thing and then come back or go straight to the another meet from there. So to make that schedule, you kind of have to figure out, you have to have your finances in order. So but like during outdoor season, you have to know that like, basically in the beginning of the year, to plan all this to this end, you have to start in like pre-season, like even before pre-season, like at the end of the last season, you have to think like, okay, where are my finances at now? Basically work all of pre-season and indoor when you have the time to stay like at home or stay like near wherever you are and then use those safe finances to do outdoor because it's a lot of self-financing for outdoor. So like in the US you pay for like, you're not making any money at all. Like it's basically all just spending money to like go to the meet, go to a hotel, pay for the meet entry, run whatever you run and then go home again. But um, if you go overseas, they pay you. So if you sign up with even like a small agency that was just like, you don't have to be super great. Just tell them your times pay the fees and they'll find you whatever meets they can find you. So having a better time is better to get more meets, but it's not required. Like I wasn't running crazy times back then. So you can just say, okay, here are my times, here are the meets. And they'll send you like, here's where the meet is. Like let's say it's in Spain, like the meets in Spain, they'll cover, they usually always cover travel costs at least. So like the plane to and from, they'll put you at a hotel for free and then you make money from winning. Like whatever place you get, you make some money. And they'll usually have like 
a tier and they'll let you know, like, here's how much money you make. But you have to pay all this up front and they reimburse you. So that's one of the difficult parts. So they have to know, like, okay, I have this much money. I'll pay this till I go there and then pay for your own food, like, here and there. European, like, meat suck at providing food. It's one of the biggest things, like, even professional athletes, because we all, like, end up at the same meets, but the food's the same. <laughs> so you have to know, like, okay, how am I going to handle my nutrition? How am I going to handle my supplements? And then go to the meet. You have to run well. If you don't, you're not making that extra money back. You're not making a profit, basically. You're just making the same money you, like, spent. And then you have to understand that most of the meets pay really late. So you might not see that money until like next preseason or even sometimes a bit later if they're like really bad. Um, so you kind of have to like have enough money to not be super poor and not be able to like, you have to have enough money or at least a credit card or something where like I can come back and pay this later with the reimbursement and it won't like negatively affect me too much. I actually like, my first year I actually got into like trouble cause I like, I went to a meet and then my paycheck for whatever I was doing, I think I, I don't know, my paycheck wasn't coming until like that Friday, but it was Wednesday and I had no money. So I like stayed in the airport for two days <laughs> and like lived there for two days. And I was just like, oh, here we go. Just waiting for this money to come in. So things like that where you're just like, it's really about mailing. I like learned to manage it a lot better. Like I have an Excel sheet where I'm like, here are the meets and here's what they're paying and here's what I'm making. And like, here's how I need to have a plan. You have to really be organized about these things because if you just kind of like go and do it, you're going to end up in trouble. So, but that's also the benefit. So the difference between like a freelancey kind of agency where they take anyone and a professional agency is that the professional one will cover your costs. So you don't have to have like the money ahead of time. They'll just have like, they'll do that for you. And then at the end of the day, like at the end of the season, they'll say, here's the money you either made or here's what you owe me. So that's, a huge benefit or whatever because they also like take those costs so it's kind of hard too because you don't know as much about how much you're taking like doing it myself I know like here's what they're covering like sometimes I know to like if I take a smaller like flight or something I can make a little bit of money from the travel fees or something but you won't know that with them they'll just say this is a chunk cost that they're going to give and then at the end of the season you either made money or you didn't so that's, it's complicated, but not that complicated. Basically, it's about having your money in order as early as possible or knowing that, okay, I have to work a ton to have that money in order by the time, like, the struggle season happens. <laughs> um, it's about finding an agency that can get you the meets. Sometimes you don't need an agency. You can, like, the meets are, all meets are public, but it's about find, hard, it's hard to find the meets and sometimes it's hard to reach out to the European meets. Um, so it's about having connections in that sense. Like if you also like, so my roommates, they know like a lot of people. So they'll ask like an athlete, like if we're at meets, they'll be like, oh, where are you going? Like what's your next meet or what's your schedule looking like? And they'll say, oh, I'm going to Barbados. And they'll be like, oh yeah, who's the meet director for that? And they'll reach out themselves and be like, oh, I run this, can I come to the meet? And then they'll like do the same thing for you. Like the meet director will be like, okay, we'll, we'll cover your travel costs. Like you come like, so basically that's what the agencies do. Like they have all these connections and they reach out to these people and do that for you. But you can also do that yourself if you really like are the type of person like not care or like don't mind that extra work. So there's a lot of options. Um, I think the middle option is like finding the free agency. Um, it's not, I say free, but like I mean more free like they take more people in. Like they're not selective about the athletes. So it's finding that agency that'll take you in and help you with that versus being super professional or like being good enough to get like a, a real agent. And then the lower end of that is doing it all yourself. Okay, so in college, I started out in engineering. I did that for two years and I switched to English but I could not do engineering and track and also I think track made me realize that I didn't like engineering as much as I thought I did. So it was kind of a good thing, but like, yeah, it made me realize I wasn't as into engineering as I thought I was. And I was switching to English, because I've always liked like English, like writing and reading and things like that. And I did fine, like I graduated, got my degree. Um, and I ended up like, kind of falling into the field I am now, but I ended up, I ended up really liking it. So I like started working for this random startup um, 
and they needed like a marketing person like who was into social media and stuff. Basically someone to manage their blog and their social media. So I just signed up for that and it's like been gone from there. So now actually I freelance like um, social media, blog manage, like copywriting, that kind of stuff. And I really love it. Like it's easy to freelance for me. So I can do that anywhere, especially because I'm a writer. I can write, like just tell me what to write and I'll write it wherever I am. Like you don't need, you don't really need Wi-Fi for that. So when I'm traveling overseas or traveling around and like the Wi-Fi could be crappy, I don't really need that. I just need to be able to write. And even just use like social media a bit, like you can schedule those things ahead of time. So it's really, it's a lot easier for me to manage that. Um, but it's actually very hard for most people to do like a career and track at the same time. Like at least not in the traditional sense, you can't do like a full, full career because the track like depending on when like your training or what you're doing that day, it's actually very hard to like have a full time job and track. Like most people work part time. And then a lot of people, which I also do, so I also substitute teach and a lot of the track athletes do that. Like I feel like every time I mention they're like, Oh yeah, I do that too. Basically, like you can go to any state. Most states have like each state has their own rules. Like maybe you might have to take a course or like a class or something, like not a long class, but like get a certificate or something. But some states have it. You just have to have your bachelor's, which I do have. That's what um, New York State has. So I have my bachelor's. Just sign up and like you can just go to school. And school times are like regular school times, like seven to two or whatever, or three. And you can do that. And depending on what school you go to, it's probably not that crazy of a day and you can train. And then if you also go to a school with like good facilities, you can like train there. So the school I like mostly go to now, like they have a great weight room. So on my like down days or my like lower key days, I can just go to the weight room and do a quick treadmill thing or like they even have like actually like good weights so like I can weight lift if I need to there. So things like that were like, you can like figure out like small part-time things. That's what a lot of people do. Um, if, you're, if you can't freelance, I think that's also a good option. Um, so personally, I am working on my career, but I know a lot of people who aren't. They put that on the side for now to focus on like their small goals. Well, large goals, but like short term, like these are the goals that I'm having. Like if I'm going for the Olympics for these four years, I'm not going to focus too much on my career. I'm going to focus on track because even doing a full time, job or even a part-time job you have to realize that like negatively affects track um you're competing with people like who are semi-professionally you're competing with people professionally who are who don't have that issue like they have practice then they have like a massage and they have maybe a chiropractor then they have like an ice bath or something then they just chill all day and have a nutritionist get them food or whatever like it's a lot if you think about that and then you're thinking about like well my day is wake up at six and then I can go to class and like help the kids or whatever. Then I have like a whole day of like standing on my feet and helping these kids and walking around the building. And then I have practice and then I go home and have to make myself some meal or whatever. It's like a longer day and it's, it affects you in the long run. So you have to think about that and you have to think about like, well, what's more important? So some days I like, if I know, I, if it's a sprint day, I won't work just because I will never have a good sprint day working at the same time. Like, I can't go to the school. And then either before or after, like, there's no way I can come and run the times I need to at practice or do exactly what I need to at practice and not be tired. So that's something that you have to really think about. Um, obviously, it helps if you have, like, some sort of help or if you can find, like, anyone can do, like, I like to say you can do, like, a writing job, like, basically, like, small gig jobs where you can find, like, the time to do it in between. Um, like my roommate just started making shirts and selling shirts. So she can do that at home. Like she can just buy the materials. She makes it, like she gets the designs online. She buys them. Um, she gets the orders, she makes them and she just sends them out. And like now that's a huge help for her. So it's basically like you had to learn to be creative about what you're doing and learn like new ways. Like you can use your degree in any way you can, but you gotta really like find, you have to work to find the perfect job for that. So like writing, like a lot of them do want in-house people or want people that are, um, can put in more hours. So you just have to like really find like those small things to like help any way you can. Um, friends wise, everyone was super supportive. Like I always think like, it's one of those things where I'm always just like, when people are like, these people didn't support me. I'm just like, really? 
it kind of makes me wonder like what kind of friends you had in the first place but I've never had anyone say like oh wow that's crazy or like or at least on the negative they'll be like oh wow that's crazy not like oh wow that's weird like why are you doing this or no one's ever been negative about it everyone's always been so supportive and my mom <laughs> she was I don't know she's always been like weird she's um she's like an immigrant so like an African so she was just like I don't know about this this isn't engineering or, <laughs> or doctor <laughs> so what is going on but when I like so in college um, after I went away and went to Commonwealth and came back um, I got offered like a full scholarship because like I had just earned it I guess um, and, and so then she was like oh wow keep running <laughs> so that kind of like incentivized her in college, but then after college, she was just like, you're still doing this? Like what's, I don't know. She's supportive, but like in a like, I want you to be happy sort of way, not in a, this is what I would choose for you sort of way. And she, she basically wants me to be like comfortable at some point. So like when I made the Olympics that first time um, in 2016, she was super happy. She was like, of course, like this is great. You deserve this. She knows how much work I put in. Um, and then after that, like she was like, so now what? Like, are you gonna go to work now? <laughs> like, when's that gonna happen? And I said, basically told her like, give me another four years. Now decide then. And now it's four years now. <laughs> so I'm trying to make this Olympics, but the whole way, like she's always been like, she's always been supportive. Now I always know like. At the end of the day, she just wants me to be happy. Um, I'm lucky enough to have that. Some people might not have that, but I'm lucky enough to have someone like, like when I was living in Boston, like, and some months were tough, she would help me. Like, she'd be like, oh, here's some money, or like, what do you need? Like, I'm not gonna let you like be on your own. Like, she wasn't that bad. Like, and she supports me in her own way. Like, she'd ask about me, she'll ask about how I'm doing. Like, she'll be like, oh, you're traveling again. Okay, that's cool. And it's also like allowed me to like travel to places that like she thinks are cool. So like I've been to Ghana like a ton more than she has in the past like few years, and she loves that. Like my dad's also in Ghana, so he's like happy I get to go see him. Um, I've been able to travel to like London. I have a lot of family in London. They're like super happy to see me all the time, and they all think it's super cool that they have like this athlete in the family, and it kind of motivates them as well to like do their own dreams and like be outside the box. And I think that's super cool. Um, I just think I've been lucky enough to have like a very supportive like group of people and it's never made me like question really too much like what am I doing with my life or anything. It's just all been like I'm glad I'm doing this and I'm glad I gave it up my all this whole time. Like I'm really glad I I don't even know what I'd be doing if I wasn't doing this right now. I'm kind of glad like basically I always told myself like I'm glad that I made this choice because I know I'd always regret it if I didn't try. Gemma Champong, I'm an Olympian. I run for the country of Ghana, and I run the 60, the 100, the 200, the 4x1, and 4x2s if they ever have it, and we can make some money.